doing a five-part series on Christian stewardship. And to recap a little bit, we've gone over uh, testimony. We're using five words to begin with another T to establish these categories. And the first one, the first category we used and we talked about was testimony. And today, we see we had some real good testimonies today. And they all, well, most of them seem to theme around vehicle brakes. <laughs> and I can relate to that too, because this week, my truck battery just played out. It wouldn't stop. But I have to give God the glory. So that truck is broken down three times, and each time, it's been in my garage. <laughs> category that we've been over was temple. The temple is mainly for us, our bodies. Mm -hmm. Because we know Jesus has his temple, and never having a temple, but we spoke of our bodies mainly. Mm -hmm. And for our bodies, we shouldn't <coughs> abuse our bodies. You know, our bodies need to be holy because that's what God wants our bodies to be. Mm -hmm. And in this day and time, the devil is working overtime. You know, there's a, a new thing that's come out, and people are falling for it. It's called it's called vaping. And vaping is not only destroying people's body, it's killing people. And but people still won't learn because they think they can outdo whatever the devil sets in front of them. That's right. So we have to take care of our bodies. And we spoke about it last time was on talent. You know, talent is very important for God because God can see what we're doing for Him. Yeah. You know, we can talk and we can do, and He likes for us to do both. Mm -hmm. So, talents are very important. He gives us talent to be used to glorify Him. Mm -hmm. Today, our topic is on Christian stewardship, and this time, the topic is treasure. Mm -hmm. Treasure. Uh, let's have a brief moment of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to see another blessed Holy Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for those who have come to hear your word. Mm -hmm. We pray, Heavenly Father, that your spirit will be with us to guide us in your word, that we may do that which you will have us to do as we learn more and more about you and your goodness. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Talk today about treasure. Are we as Christians searching the Word of God carefully and prayerfully in order not to depart from His precepts and His requirements? Amen. The Lord will not look upon us with pleasure if we withhold anything, large or small that should be returned to him. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. If we desire to spend money to gratify our own desires and wishes, <coughs> let us think of the good that we could do with that money to spread the gospel and to help our fellow man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let us lay aside for the master small and great sums that the work may be built up in new places. If we spend selfishly the money so much needed, the Lord does not, he cannot bless us with his accommodation. Mm -hmm. As stewards of the grace of God, we are handling the Lord's money. Mm -hmm. It means much, very much to us to be strengthened by his rich grace day by day mm -hmm. to be enabled to understand the will, to be found faithful in that which is least, as well as in that which is great. Amen. Amen. When this is our experience, the service of Christ will be a reality to us. God demands this of us. And before angels and men, we should reveal our gratitude <coughs> for what he has done for us. God's benevolence, his kindness to us, we shall reflect back 
and praise to him. And deeds of mercy to our fellow man. Mm. Do all church members realize that they have is given to them to be used and improved to God's glory? Mm. God keeps a faithful account with every human being <coughs> in this world. He keeps a book up in heaven called the Book of Life. Amen. And when the day of reckoning comes, the faithful steward takes no credit to himself. He doesn't say, my money, <laughs> but thy money Amen. has gained interest. Amen. Amen. He knows that without the entrusted gift, no increase could have been made. Amen. He feels that in faithfully discharging his stewardship, he has but done his duty. Mm -hmm. The capital was the Lord's, and by God's power, he has been able to trade upon it successfully. Mm -hmm. God alone should be glorified. Yes. The approval of the Lord is received almost with surprise. <coughs> it is so unexpected. For Christ says to him, Well done, a good and faithful servant. Thou has been faithful over a few things, I will make thee rule for over many things. Amen. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Amen. 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 How inclined is man to set his affection on earthly things? His attention is absorbed in houses and land, and his duty to his fellow man is neglected. His own <laughs> salvation is treated as a matter of little consequence and the claims of God upon him are forgotten. Men grab the treasures of earth as tenaciously as if they could hold on to them forever. Amen. They seem to think that they have a right to do with their meaning just as it pleases them. Amen. No matter what the Lord has commanded or what may be needed of their fellow man, they forget that all they claim as theirs has simply been entrusted to them. Mm -hmm. They are stewards of the grace of God. Amen. Amen. God has committed this treasure to them to prove them that they may manifest their attitude to his cause and show the thoughts of their heart toward him. Mm -hmm. They are not only trading for time, but for eternity mm -hmm. with their Lord's money. And the use or abuse of their talent will determine their position and trust in the world to come. The idea of stewardship should have a practical bearing upon all the people of God. Practical benevolence will give spiritual life to thousands of nominal, that means in name only, professors of the truth who now mourn over their darkness. It will transform them from selfish, covetous, worshipers of mammon to earnest, faithful co-workers with Christ in the salvation of sinners. <laughs> Jeremiah 17, 7 says, Blessed is a man that trusted in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. Amen. A steward identifies himself with his master. He accepts the responsibilities of a steward. The position of a school is one of dignity. If in any wise he accepts it and turns the advantages gained by trading with the Lord's goods to his own advantage, he has perverted the trust reposed to him. <coughs> the selfish use of riches proves one unfaithful to God and unfits the steward of means for the higher trust of heaven. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 and 21 say, Lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth where moth and rust does corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust does corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Amen. 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 Malachi chapter 3, verses 8 through 12, 16 and 17 say, Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But you say, 
We're in how we rob thee. In tithes and offerings, ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now, here with, said the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will re rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, said the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, said the Lord of hosts. Then they that feared the Lord spake off from one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it, and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. And they shall be mine, said the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spared his own son that serves him. End quote. In robbing God, they have robbed themselves more. Mm -hmm. They have deprived themselves of the heavenly treasure through their covetousness and because of their evil heart of unbelief. God gives to every man his work and he expects corresponding returns according to their various trusts. He does not expect a man of poverty to give alms as the man who has riches. He doesn't expect of the feeble and suffering the activity and strength which the healthy man has. God calls a servant, which implies that we are employed by him to do a certain work. Amen. And to bear responsibility. Amen. Amen. He has lent us capital for investment. Mm -hmm. It is not our property. No, amen. And we displease God if we hoard up or spend as we choose our Lord's goods. Mm -hmm. We are responsible for the use or abuse of that which God has thus lent us. Amen. If this capital which the Lord has placed in our hands lies dormant or we buried it in the earth, we shall be called to an account by the master. Mm -hmm. He requires not ours, but his own. Mm -hmm. Many poor men who are now content to do nothing for the good of their fellow man and for the advancement of the cause of God might do much if they would step out in faith. Amen. They are as accountable to God for their capital of physical strength as is a rich man for his capital of money. Those who have physical strength are to employ their strength in the service of God. Amen. They are to labor with their hands and earn means to use in the cause of God. Amen. The word of God teaches that if a man will not work, neither shall he eat. Amen. But if there is unavoidable poverty, we are to manifest tenderness and compassion toward those who are unfortunate. Yes. There are men in the ranks of savage peoples who are holding fast their earthly treasure. It is their God which is an idol God, and they love their money and their merchandise better than they love their Savior, who, for their sake, became poor that they, through his poverty, might be made rich. They exalt their earthly treasures, considering them of greater value than the souls of men. With such have the well done spoken to them? No, never. The irrevocable sentence depart from me will fall upon their startled senses. They have been slothful servants, hoarding the means. 
God has given them, while their fellow man has perished in error and darkness. What a revelation would be made in the day of God when hoarded treasures and wages kept back by fraud cry against their processors who were professing good Christians and flattered themselves that they were keeping the law of God. When they love gain better than they love the purchase of Christ's blood, the souls of man, they have robbed God of the service of a lifetime. He still must do his part financially, through tithing, and free will offering to spread the gospel. The world favors the rich and looks upon them as a greater value than the honest poor man. But the rich are developing their characters after the manner in which they use their trusted gifts. Mm -hmm. They are making manifest whether or not it would be safe to trust them with eternal riches. Mm -hmm. Both the poor and the rich are deciding their own eternal destiny mm -hmm. and proving whether they are fit subjects for the inheritance <coughs> of the saint and glory. Those who put their riches to a selfish use in this world are revealing attributes of character that show what they would do if they had greater advantages and possessed the imperishable treasures of the kingdom of God. The selfish principles exercised on the earth are not the principles which will prevail in heaven. All man stand on equal ground in heaven. Amen. No respect of person. God wants to use his treasures, which are our blessings, in relieving the wants of suffering humanity, in advancing his cause, in building up his kingdom in the world, in sending missionaries into regions beyond, in disseminating the knowledge of Christ, in all parts of the world. Amen. Amen. Some are left to perish in their sins while church members who claim to be Christians are using God's sacred trust of means in gratifying unholy appetites Amen. Amen. and indulging self. Amen. Those who use money for selfish gratification are pleasing and glorifying the enemy of all righteousness. Wow. They turn their hearts to God, they will use their money to bless and uplift their fellow men Amen. to relieve poverty Amen. and suffering. Yes. Many who profess to be Christians fail to heed the command of Christ when he says, Lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust does corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Amen. The Bible does not condemn the rich man because he is rich. It does not declare the acquisition of wealth to be a sin. Nor does it say that money is the root of all evil. On the contrary, the scriptures state that it is God who gives the power to get wealth. Amen. We cannot make the heart pure or holier mm -hmm. by clothing the body in sackcloth mm -hmm. or depriving the home of all that ministers to comfort and convenience. Mm -hmm. The scriptures teach that wealth is a dangerous possession only mm -hmm. when placed in competition with the immortal treasure. Mm -hmm. We saw that in Esau when he sold his birthright for a bowl of soup. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We saw that in Balaam, when he forfeited the faith of God for the rewards of the king of men. Mm -hmm. And we saw that in Judas, when for 30 pieces of silver, he betrayed the Lord of glory. Mm -hmm. It is the love of money that the word of God denounces Amen. as the root of all evil. Amen. Amen. Money itself is the gift of God to men to be used with fidelity in the service. God blessed Abraham, made him rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. And the Bible states, as an evidence of divine favor, 
that God gave David, Solomon, and Hezekiah very much riches and honor. Mm -hmm. So our Savior gave a deciding warning against hoarding up the treasures of earth. Mm -hmm. Jesus says, lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth, where moth and rust thus corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. An inordinate desire for gain will lead even the professed followers of Christ into imitation of the customs of the world. Mm -hmm. Injustice is displeasing to God. Mm -hmm. Very few realize the strength of their love for money until the test is brought to bear upon them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Men who profess to be Christ followers then show that they are unprepared for heaven. Their works testify that they love wealth more than their neighbor Amen. or their God. Amen. Like the rich young man, they acquire the way of life, but when it's pointed out and the cost estimated, and they see that the sacrifice of earth and riches is demanded, they decide that heaven costs too much. <laughs> the greater the treasure laid upon the earth, the more difficult it is for the professors to realize that they are not his own, but are lent to him to be used for God's glory. Amen. Here, Jesus improves the opportunity to give his disciples an impressive lesson. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Early I say unto you, that a rich man should hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Amen. The influence of the love of money over human mind is almost paralyzing. The more they have, the more they want. Mm -hmm. yeah. And their riches have accumulated, they have put their trust in them, and have lost faith in God and in his promises. The faithful, trusting, poor man becomes rich toward God mm -hmm. by judiciously using the little he has and blessing others with his means. Yeah. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Yeah. He considers the salvation of his fellow man of greater importance than all the gold and silver the world contains. We should live and store for ourselves a good foundation against the time to come Amen. that we may lay hold on eternal life. Amen. Amen. This will prove a safe investment. Amen. But many show by their works that they dare not trust the bank of heaven. They choose to trust their means in the earth rather than to send it before them to heaven. Amen. The young rich ruler represents a large class who would be excellent Christians if there was no cross to bear, mm -hmm. if there was no humiliating burden for them to bear, mm -hmm. if there was no earthly advantages to resign from, mm -hmm. if there was no sacrifice of property to make, mm -hmm. or if they did not have to get their feelings hurt. Mm -hmm. Christ has entrusted to them the capital of talents and means, and he expects corresponding returns. That which we possess is not our own, but it is to be employed in serving him for whom we have received all that we have. Amen. Satan, the great deceiver, is saved. Go. Make the possessors of land and money drunk with the cares of this life. Mm -hmm. Present the world before them in its most attractive light, that they may lay up their treasures here and fix their affection upon earthly things. Mm -hmm. We must do our utmost to prevent those who labor God's call from obtaining means to use against us. Mm -hmm. Keep the money in our own devilish ranks. Mm -hmm. The more means they obtain, the more they will hurt our kingdom by taking from us our subjects. Make them care more for their money than for the upbuilding of Christ's kingdom and the spread of truth we hate. And 
and we need not fear their influence. For we know that every selfish, covetous person will fall under our power and will finally be separated from God's people. <coughs> That's the devil's mm -hmm. attitude. Mm -hmm. Satan is the arch deceiver. Yeah. There are many who in their hearts charge God with being a hard master because he claimed their possessions and their services. But we can bring to God nothing that is not already his. All things come of thee, said King David, and of thine own have we given thee. All things are God's, not only by creation, but by redemption. All the burdens, all the blessings of this life and of the life to come are delivered to us. The love of Jesus and the love of money cannot dwell in the same heart. The love of God so far surpasses the love of money that the possessor breaks away from his riches and transfers his affection to God. Through love, he is then led to minister to the wants of the needed and to assist the cause of God. It is his highest pleasure to make a right disposition of his Lord's goods. He holds all that he has as not his own and faithfully discharges the duty as God's steward. Then he can keep both the great commandments of the law. I said, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all of thy soul and for all thy mind. And thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Amen. Amen. In this way, it is possible for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Yes. And everyone that has forsaken houses or brethren or sisters or fathers or mother or wife or children mm -hmm. or land mm -hmm. for my name's sake mm -hmm. shall receive a hundredfold this life and shall inherit everlasting life. Amen. That's Matthew chapter 19, verse 29. The world of man is laboring for earthly, temporal things. He is laying up his treasure upon the earth, doing just that which Jesus has told him he must not do. Thus, a sincere Christian appreciates the warning given by Jesus and is a doer of his word, thrust laying up his treasures in heaven, just as the world redeemer has told him he should do. He views an eternity of bliss worth a life of persevering and untiring effort. He is not misdirecting his efforts. He is setting his affection upon things above where Christ sits at the right hand of God. Transformed by grace, his life is hid with Christ and God. Amen. He is not lost by any means, the power of accumulation, but he employs his active energies in seeking for spiritual attainments. Then all his entrusted talents will be appreciated as God's gift to be employed to his glory. If the best we have is presented with a sincere heart, and love to God for a longing desire to do service to Jesus, the gift is wholly acceptable. Amen. Everyone can live treasures in heaven. Yes. Everyone. Amen. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 17 to 19 says, Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy, that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. Amen. Amen. We are to minister to the sick, to feed the hungry, yes. to clothe the naked, yes. and to instruct the ignorant. Yes. Sin is casting its shadow over all of us. Yes. 
Let us make ourselves ready to cooperate with the Lord. Yeah. The pleasure and power of this world will pass away. Yeah. No one can carry his earthly treasures into the eternal world. No. But the life spent in doing the will of God will abide forever. Amen. The result of that which is given to advance the work of God will be seen in the kingdom of God. All that we do is to be done willingly. Amen. We are to bring our offerings with joy and gratitude, saying as we present them, of thine own we freely give thee. Amen. The most costly service we can render is but meager compared to the gift of God to our world. Christ is a gift every day. Amen. God gave him to the world. He graciously takes the gifts entrusted to his human agents for the advancement of his work in this world. First we show that we recognize and acknowledge that everything belongs to God absolutely and entirely. Amen. Come to the Lord with hearts overflowing with thankfulness yes. for past and present mercies. Amen. Amen. It is better not to give at all than to give grudgingly. Yes. For if we impart of our means when we have not the spirit to give freely, we mock God. Amen. All our offerings should be presented with cheerfulness. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 through 7 said, But this I said, He which so is sparing shall reap also sparing. And he which so bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man, according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, nor of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Amen. Amen. Let us bear in mind that we are dealing with one upon whom we depend for every blessing, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Pentecost chapter 27, verse 30 says, In all the tithes of the land, whether of the seeds of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. Amen. It is holy unto the Lord. There are only a few things God calls holy. Mm -hmm. We should put a difference between that which is holy and that which is not holy. Amen. The Bible is holy. Amen. Amen. There is no other book like it. Amen. No other book <coughs> speaks with authority as the Bible does. Amen. The Sabbath is holy. Amen. Amen. Therefore, it is not like any other day. Yes. We do not do on the Sabbath what we do on the other six days. Amen. We ought to make a difference between that which is holy and that which is not holy. That's right. The name of God is holy. Amen. We shouldn't throw his name around in jest, Amen. never in profanity, Amen. because it's a holy name. Amen. Amen. We must have respect for his holy name yes. and for his holy character. Amen. Amen. There is no other God like the one and only true God in heaven and earth. Amen. Amen. Among those things which God calls holy, matrimony is holy. Amen. Don't take marriage lightly. No. The tithe is holy unto the Lord. That's right. You are to return one tenth of your increase back to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Malachi chapter 3 verse 8 asks a question. Will a man rob God? That's right. The answer is yes. 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 Care for yourself my time and my offer. <laughs> Give because you love him. Give because you believe in him. Yes. Give because you trust him. You must have the right motive in your heart. Yes. Yeah. God is calling all of us to be faithful. Mm -hmm. Give him his tent, which is holy. Mm -hmm. And then give offerings 
as you are able. Yeah. Offerings are for the poor and for the expenses of the church. Don't be selfish. Trust the Lord. Amen. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. When you start thinking that you are doing too much for Jesus, mm -hmm. stop and remember what he has done for you Amen. and what he promises to do. Amen. Amen. Tithing is an act of love and a statement of faith. Amen. And what more appropriate time could be chosen for setting aside the tithe and presenting our offerings to God than on his holy Sabbath day? Yes. On the Sabbath, we have thought upon his goodness. Mm -hmm. We have beheld his work in creation mm -hmm. as an evidence of his power in redemption. Mm -hmm. Our hearts are filled with thankfulness for his great love. Mm -hmm. And now, before the toil of a new week begins, we return to him his own, yes. and with it an offering to testify to our gratitude. Amen. 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 John chapter 3, verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave mm -hmm. his only begotten Son, that yes. whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. Remember, we cannot outgive God. Amen. Therefore, let us do our part with love in our hearts yes. and smiles on our faces. Amen. For the privilege to be called a child of God. Amen. A true steward of the Master, who is the great I am, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the supplier of all good things. Amen. Now, as I close, <clears throat> unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless. For the presence of his glory with exceeding joy mm -hmm. to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Amen.